Hi, I'm Jane Reardon with the Illinois Supreme Court Commission on Professionalism. Welcome to Reimagining Law. Today, I have with me two guests to discuss the timely topic of civility and professionalism. Retired Justice of the Illinois Supreme Court, Robert Thomas, and Judge Deborah Walker of the Circuit Court of Cook County. Both have been instrumentally involved with growing the Commission on Professionalism. I can't think of two better guests to talk about these topics. Welcome Justice Thomas and Judge Walker. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you, Jane, happy to be here. Judge Walker, how has the state of civility changed within the legal profession since 2005? What are the new challenges and obstacles that we're dealing with today? Well, when I think back to 2005, when um, Justice Thomas decided as chief to make us a permanent commission of the court, I was still practicing law at that time and things were a little rough um, with regard to just sort of general rudeness and aggressive lawyers and uh, something that Justice Thomas calls the Rambo style of litigation. Um, and I was, you know, firsthand experiencing those issues. I then got on the bench in 2008. I continue, obviously, to be very involved in the civility movement in the state. And I'd have to say that uh, probably the biggest change I've seen in the last few years uh, following the 2017 rise with the Me Too movement has been some organizing of women attorneys in particular to combat uh, sexual uh, harassment and aggression from other attorneys. And I've done some speaking on those topics and I know the commission has attempted to help those organizations get better organized and uh, be engaged in advocacy because clearly this is a professionalism issue. But I think those are probably the primary ways I've seen uh, the profession sort of morph uh, from becoming uh, more civil, a little less aggressive, but then I have seen this rise in attention certainly to uh, sexual harassment allegations and so forth. Justice Thomas, what's your perspective about the change in these issues? Well, I think it's a, a big attaboy, again, for you and the commission. Um, this, the ubiquitous nature of, of how the com commission operates. I've seen in, in very short order, uh, because of the depth and the breadth of this commission, that bar associations not only couldn't avoid uh, professionalism as being a hot topic, but embraced it. I, I had a number of calls from uh, the Bar Association presidents that wanted to have uh, talks by the commissioners, wanted to make that their hallmark issue. So that and the fact that it started it with civility, and now we're talking about in, uh, issues such as civility, gender, race, equity, um, it, it's become much broader and much, as I said, much more embraced by the Bar. Judge Walker, you are a team lead um, in the Circuit Court of Cook County. I'm wondering if you can speak to the role that leaders have in setting the tones for civility and professionalism in their organizations. Well, it's critical, you know. Um, basically, a good leader has to set the tone from the top for everybody. Um, and certainly as a team lead in the domestic relations division for the Circuit Court of Cook County, I endeavor to do that every day. And the reason it has to start with the leader in the room is that you've got staff people who are watching you. Um, we've got litigants who are watching us. Many of them are self-represented litigants. Um, we have to set the tone for what is acceptable behavior. We have to set the expectations for the particular court appearance. And that goes for everybody who's watching us. So lawyers, litigants, staff people, we all have to work together to set a tone of decorum, civility, respectful conduct, and those types of things. So we're living in a very politically charged moment right now, yet it's the job of the courts to deliver impartial justice Justice Thomas, how did they do that? Well, we, I think we're living in probably the most polarized 
uh, society, um, at least in my lifetime, maybe ever. Um, unfortunately, Jane, people aren't listening anymore. Uh, we were reminded of that as Supreme Court justices on the back wall of the Supreme Court co courtroom where the words, the Latin phrase, Aldi alterum part, partum, listen to the other side. Well, people aren't listening anymore. Um, and that is the hallmark, maybe the most important aspect of being professional and civil, to listen with respect to the other side. We have to bring that to the forefront again. We as lawyers um, have that opportunity. Uh, we should be leaders in the area um, that others can look at us and, and, um, and know that there's respectful listening going on. Judge Walker, do you think the courts have been successful in delivering or administering fair and impartial justice over the past several months? Um, I can look at this from two lenses, I think. Um, I can look at it from the standpoint of uh, our practices under COVID. And I have to tell you that my view is from a family law judge and um, the problems of dysfunctional families have not gone away. If anything, they've been magnified by the pandemic. And we all had to make a very quick pivot to conducting remote court operations. Um, they've had their challenges, certainly. It's uh, hard to um, keep control over a courtroom on Zoom sometimes, but they've also, um, I think, offered us an opportunity to allow more people to access justice. Um, People no longer have to perhaps get childcare for an entire morning to come to a status conference. They can do it from the comfort of their home on a computer, an iPad, or even their uh, telephone. Um, and I do see some of these um, functions probably continuing after we get back to in-person court, just as a matter of access to justice for folks. So I would say over the past few months, there have been some challenges. We've certainly worked hard to try to meet those challenges. And in some instances, um, we are offering something that we haven't been able to offer before for our uh, self-represented litigants in particular. That's great. And you said there were two lenses that you were looking at it through? Was there something? Oh yeah, I was thinking in terms of judges generally, like uh, politically in our, our, in our very divided nation right now, um, as we know, uh, legal matters end up in the courts if they can't be resolved um, in some other way. And even if we looked at um, the uh, contested ballots in the last presidential election, those matters have been handled by courts, by Republican judges, uh, federal uh, judges appointed by Republicans, federal judges appointed by Democrats, and they've been heard in 50 to 60 different um, tribunals around the nation. And I think that uh, they have been handled uh, promptly uh, and uh, with a, a good view to resolution of the matters before them and uh, basically upholding the rule of law and our um, state of democracy. Uh, so I think judges have tried very hard, our, our third branch of government, to uh, serve the public, the citizens, both in our state and in our country. That brings me to another question that is, is similar right now, um, because we have a politically charged environment and we have a change in leadership coming up. And we have a lot of lawyers um, who play roles or are elected officials, et cetera. I'd like you both, if you're comfortable to comment, what um, role does lawyers' civility and professionalism play in our government? Well, Jane, I, I think that, uh, in fact, a couple days ago, I heard uh, a politician indicate that a long time ago, he was a lawyer. And uh, I know what he's trying to say, that he hasn't practiced law in a while. But I, I think that once you become a lawyer, you're a lawyer and you're part of a distinct club, right? Whether you're a prosecutor, defense attorney, 
civil lawyer, um, no matter a uh, uh, law school teacher, uh, professor, uh, you're part of this community, a distinct community. And there are a number of people in Congress, men and women, in the legislative branch and the executive branch that are lawyers. And I think this is an opportunity. I mean, this is an opportunity to lead. This is an opportunity to disagree without being disagreeable, um, to, to maybe carve in a little bit to the lawyer jokes that, uh, that are out there maybe on the Hill, uh, that there are too many lawyers. This is a great opportunity to take that leadership role, to be professional and civil, uh, to listen to the other side and to make an impact where maybe others um, don't see it the same way you do. Thank you, Judge Walker. Yeah, Jane, um, the way I look at it is uh, it still comes back to leadership. Lawyers sort of are naturally inclined to be leaders. And before they even become elected representatives like what Justice Thomas was referring to, you'll often see lawyers in positions in their communities of leader. They're the people who are on the condo boards and on the school board and uh, on their faith-based, their church boards or synagogue boards. Um, and they may use these opportunities as a springboard to like later elective office, but they're in their community serving as leaders. And again, if they can set the tone for respectful conduct with those who disagree with them, if they can lead through example um, by using uh, the tenets of professionalism and civility and respect and all of those things we talk about at the Commission on Professionalism, then I think it'll help spread the word to the entire community on how we should behave and how we should interact with one another. I think it's a uh, uh, an opportunity to demonstrate what unites us and not what divides us. It's a way to demonstrate an allegiance to the rule of law, even at the very local and community level. Um, after all, I think to um, quote from our famous Shakespeare and Henry VI, I believe he said in, in Henry VI, the first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. And that really is a backhanded way of praising lawyers because if you do kill all the lawyers and there is no rule of law, that's how you create chaos. That's how you overrule a democracy. So um, we need to be steadfast. We need to demonstrate through our leadership um, how to be good citizens how to get along with one another and be respectful of one another, even when we disagree. Wow, that was fantastic. Thank you both for being here and having this discussion. It is so important in this day and age. Please like and share our video and stay subscribed to our channel to be updated on future episodes. I appreciate very much Justice Thomas and Judge Walker's time today. And I appreciate you for watching and take those words of leadership to heart um, because we can make a difference. Thank you and be well.